Alright, so to remove a hard drive from a Mac, um, you're probably going to need a um, screwdriver toolkit with a bunch of small uh, little screw heads, and you're going to need to, uh, what I would recommend doing, is grabbing out each one of them and carefully putting them into the screw hole to make sure that they go in. and that there's very little to no um, wiggle room once they're in there. Uh, you don't want to strip out these screws on the back. Um, they will strip out very easily. So it is something you have to be very careful of. Once you find the bit that will work, uh, go ahead and remove all of the screws from the back. screws on the back, towards the back hinge, are going to be longer. Be sure to keep those separate and remember which holes those came out of. Okay, now that the screws are out, I've noted that these three holes here were longer screws, while all the other ones were identical smaller screws. So now that you have all the screws out, you're going to need to go ahead and pull off the back of the Mac. It's probably best to have a plastic tool to do this with because you don't want to scratch the uh, metal backing of the Mac. Um, if you, you could use a flathead screwdriver, um, but like I said, this will work as well. Once it pops out like that, again, be very gentle. Um, it is popping out two little uh, plastic pieces that are attached into there. So you don't want to pull in that too hard and break these pieces off. Once you get the back off, now take a look at the different parts. Here you have the, the battery, the RAM and memory, the two cooling fans, the CD drive, and here we have the hard drive. So to remove the hard drive, there are four screws that hold in a bracket. The only one you need to remove are the two screws here on this longer bracket piece next to the plastic flap. Take out those two screws and then simply lift up on the bracket and it'll pull out. And then lift up on the plastic piece and the drive will remove. Careful when you remove it as it is not completely detached from the laptop yet. You'll notice a very thin cable connected to it. Just gently pull out the cable from the end. Now that you have the hard drive removed, you're going to need to remove the four metal screws from the end. And these are the screws that allow it to slide in to the mechanism in the laptop. You're going to need a star head to remove these. So again, you're going to need to pull out your small screwdriver set and locate a star head of the proper size. Once you've located one that fits in snugly, you need to go ahead and unscrew all four of those from the drive. Now you have the screws removed, you can use those for your replacement drive. If you need to recover information or attempt to recover information off of your old drive, go ahead and purchase a external uh, hard drive enclosure. You, uh, USB 2 or 3.0 will work fine. And then you can put that drive into one of those holders. Plug this into your computer and then you can copy the files off of this drive. Okay, so once you have the old drive removed, um, we'll go ahead and install the replacement drive. In this case, I am using a Seagate one terabyte SSD hybrid drive. So it's a one terabyte mechanical hard drive with, I believe, 32 gigs buffer, SSD buffer. 
so it should increase the performance quite a bit. This is also a 7200 RPM drive and, and the one that was removed was a 5400 RPM drive. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and screw in the screws that came out of the side of the old drive. Okay, once all four of those are back in, we want to go ahead and reattach the SATA power and data cable. And then we want to line up with the holes. We want to make sure we line up with these holes here. The two little screws that we just screwed back in. And if everything's lined up, it should drop right back into place. So then we want to go ahead and return the bracket that we removed. Make sure we put it back on the right way. It'll only drop down in one way. All right, I need to go ahead and swap out my screw again for the smaller Phillips head screwdriver. And we want to go ahead and tighten down those two screws on that bracket. There we go. So we got to drive back in. Now we need to return the cover. Now remember when we took this off we had these two plastic pieces here that snapped into place so we want to make sure um, that they snap back into place when we return this here. Okay. Yep, so what I'm doing is I'm just lifting back up here on the end just to make sure that it did. Actually, I didn't hear an audible snap, um, but there's definitely resistance now, so those did snap into place. Also, hopefully you noted uh, which screw holes were your longer screws, which were these three here. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the three longer screws first. And then screw in the remaining smaller screws. It does seem the screws on this side do go in at just an ever so slight of an angle. So do be sure when you're screwing them back in that they are going in smoothly. Um, you don't want to strip out the threads on the screws. Okay, now that all the screws are back in, just kind of glide your hand over, make sure that it's smooth, that there's no screws sticking out. And now we are ready to go ahead and reinstall macOS. Alright, so now that we got everything back together, you want to go ahead and insert your macOS installation DVD. Go ahead and press the power button and hold down the option key on the keyboard. This will bring you into the boot menu. And once that starts to load, you can go ahead and let go of the option key. You can go ahead and connect to a wireless network first if you want. This way the Mac is able to get updates for the installation. And then go ahead and click on the arrow beneath the macOS install DVD. Okay, so now we're at the OS X Utilities screen. Uh, the first thing we're going to need to do is initialize the, the disk since we just installed a new disk. So let's go ahead and we're going to click on Disk Utility and then click Continue. I'm going to go ahead and select the disk that we just put in. So here it is, the one terabyte disk. We want to go to the tab here that says Partition. 
Then we want to go down here, click the little plus sign. This creates a part one partition on the drive. We can go ahead and name it. So I'll go ahead and name it OS, uh, OS X. You can actually create multiple partitions, but in this case, we're just going to leave the size as the default because we only want the one operating system. Go ahead and leave it on Mac OS Extended Journaled. And click Apply. It'll ask you to confirm, and you want to go ahead and click Partition. So basically what this is doing is making a place on the disk that we just installed for us to install Mac OS. All right, once that is finished, you will see over here on the left-hand side, underneath your drive, the partition name that you just created. So we can go and close this now. Now let's go ahead and click on Reinstall OS X and click Continue. Click Continue again. And then this will confirm that you, um, in this case, I'm doing a network res or internet restore, so it's going to confirm that I'm ready to download and restore OS X. Accept the license agreement. And then here you'll see the drive that we have partitioned. If you just installed a brand new drive and you did not do the first step of setting the partition, when you get to this point here, you will not see a drive um, because there is actually no readable partition on the drive. Um, so you have to do that step in order um, to be able to see the drive there. So then go ahead and click on install. So once you click install, it'll begin installing the OS X version that you've selected. If you're downloading it from the internet, it will take a little bit longer than if you have the installation DVD. In either case, be patient with it. Make sure your laptop is plugged in and your computer will begin installing and restart automatically. Okay, so once that finishes, all you need to do is select your country, click continue. Select your keyboard and just continue on through the settings. We need to skip the setup of an Apple ID for now. And there we go. We have successfully replaced the hard drive in a MacBook Pro and installed Mac OS X. So thank you for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, go ahead and click the subscribe button below the video. Or you can also check out my website at techtipguru.com for more helpful tech tips and reviews. So thank you for watching.